City Sleep World. The Warriors finish 10 games over 500. They finish in the 10 seed. That means they're going to play Sacramento at Golden One Center on Tuesday. So this, of course, is a rematch of the first round of last season. That one went to seven. Steph Curry needed 50 points to propel the Warriors into the next round. So lots of familiarity between these teams, lots of history, coaching staff. Listen, this is an exciting matchup. This is Dalton Johnson. I'm Kareth Burke. How are you feeling about the Warriors landing here at the 10 seed? It really is kind of this such a familiar, interesting spot with them going against Sacramento. Obviously, we talk about them being 10 games over 500. This is a team that is a better team than the previous season which are with a much lower seed. It shows how crazy the Western Conference was this season, how loaded it was this season, yeah. obviously, right? So the Warriors rode this wave. It's in them crashing down, but they're feeling good going in the plane against a team that they know pretty darn well. All right, I'm doing the coulda, shoulda, wouldas, okay? Maybe those 12 or 13 games where the Warriors led by a dozen points, gave it up. What if they had four of those games? I don't know. Listen, I'm going to just spin my wheels and like, th there's no point in doing that, okay? The Warriors arrived at that 10 seed. So it is what it is. Let's take a look at this playoff bracket because as we know, that 9-10 matchup is an elimination game. If the Warriors advance against the Kings, then they play on Friday. That is also an elimination game, okay? This is tough. That it's like Steve Kerr said it was like the NCAA tournament. You have to win these ones in order to advance. Um, man, I, I <laughs> this week, this week is so intense for the Dubs. It's pretty wild because I can't say that the last two months especially have set the Warriors up for this wild ride of having to go on the road over and over and over again like this, right? With this March Madness style of play right now, go on the road, go on the road, survive in advance. That has to be the feeling right now. So you think about the Steph Currys, the Draymond Green, the Clay Thompsons, the guys who have been there, done that, but also the Kavon Looney's of the world, the Chris Paul. This is why you bring Chris Paul in for matchups like this, for the playoffs. So yes, this team, you, you would have to think that they are battle tested and they have been road warriors this entire season. So they got to put that on their backs right now and hope that that can propel them against the Kings. The Warriors remember what happened the last time they were a play-in team, okay? This was 2021. They lost to the Lakers. Then they lost to the Grizzlies. That was at Chase Center in overtime. Okay, so there, that wasn't too, too long ago. Plenty of guys on the roster still remember what that moment is like. Steve Kerr remembered 2021. Here's what he had to say pregame. I mean, I, I thought we were wiped out emotionally after that Laker game uh, in the 7-8 game. And, um, you know, I, it, it's it's really tough because you're obviously putting all your chips in to win a game if you're in the play-in. Um, but I thought we were um, – we didn't have a ton of energy for the, the, the second one. And um, so I, I – it, it's most likely we're gonna we're gonna have to win two games the way it's looking. So, um, you know, but if you're in the seven eight game, do you? You know, the question that I had at the time afterwards was, uh, you know, should we have invested a little less emotionally into that game? And um, it's a tough one to figure out. But um, but I, I I felt like uh, Memphis had a. Big advantage coming off a win, feeling good. We were kind of wiped out, and they took it to us. They, they got out to a big early lead before we were able to come back and force overtime. So it's so interesting dynamics, like from an emotional standpoint with the play-in. All right, so to state the obvious, an elimination game means you have to give it your all. And I think that's why – I think that it's why it made sense that the Warriors found rest nights for Steph and Draymond tonight so they have more in the tank and they can give it their all. A hundred percent. I think that, of course, rest was the right move. And at the same time, getting somebody like Clay Thompson into rhythm early on where he got his 25 points, started off slow from the three-point line, but found the free throws early on, which I really like. So I think that the rest was a smart move move getting clay going in this game was the right move and now it's a much different mindset of going from that 7-8 game like Steve talked about to going in that 9-10 game where you do have to put all your eggs into one basket you know I can only imagine how much you have to exert yourself in the environment that Sacramento is going to be the cowboys the cowbells will be out the <laughs> booing is going to be loud it's going to be a raucous environment in Sacramento so very interesting to see as far as your energy and putting all those eggs in
in one basket to just try to survive in advance right now. The Sacramento crowd loved to boo Draymond. That was even before there was that step on DeMontis Sabonis' chest. Okay, so all of that is going to carry into the next game. I think we should hear from Draymond Green. That he could be on the road Tuesday. If you win on the road Friday, if you win on the road, uh, what do you think about that? You know, it sounds pretty daunting, but uh, how are you approaching just that set of circumstances? Our last eight weeks has prepared us tremendously for that. Um, we've been on the road pretty much the last month and a half, two months, uh, quite a bit. Uh, we fared pretty well on the road all year, you know, so know we're capable of going to win some road games. Uh, and when this team's back is against the wall, I like how the group shows up. So, um, you know, it's not ideal, uh, but it is what it is, and that's what we're faced with, and we want to keep playing for um, much longer into this season. So just got to go get it done. Jeremiah, in the last year or two, as the Kings have gotten better, there's been more talk about, you know, a Northern California rivalry, quote unquote. And when you play a seven game playoff series, that obviously adds to it. I'm just curious if you could speak to the, what the energy, what the atmosphere is like. I mean, you guys played a very memorable game seven, Steph drops 50. This year they overcame a big deficit. What, what, what's sort of the electricity like when you guys play the Kings the last few games? Uh, it's always a playoff type game. Like you feel that you go into, um, and to their arena, their fans want to light the beam and see us lose and beat the crap out of us. And they come in here, we, wa we want to beat the crap out of them. A um, lot of familiarity amongst the two organizations, even beyond just us going out and playing in the money games that we've played against each other over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, Mike, Vivek, um, <clears throat> LB, like there's a ton of familiarity amongst the organizations. So, um, yeah, I mean, that it kind of has brewed into that. Uh, but, you know, for us, it's another game you gotta, that we have to go win. It's not just another game in the sense of like, oh, it's just any other game. It's another game that we have to go win, and we got to go get it done. It is interesting that despite the Warriors' success on the road, 25 wins this season, Draymond said it is not ideal. Maybe there is like just another feeling in the air for the postseason. Um, when it comes to Draymond, we were just talking about how he and Steph got rest night tonight, but also Dalton, looking at the box score tonight, nobody for the Warriors played more than 24 minutes. Okay, Guy Santos, one second over 24 minutes. So if not all of these guys had a pocket to rest, at least they played fewer minutes. Yeah, 100%. I think that that was exact move when it comes to even a Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins and to get them in rhythm early. Whenever you don't have Steph Curry on the floor, someone has to step up offensively. So to see Clay, to see Andrew Wiggins have efficient games offensively, mm -hmm. I think goes a long way and get him rolling into this game in Sacramento. And like I said earlier with the free throws, that's what I really like to see too, where Clay took five, Andrew Wiggins took six, find ways to find efficient scoring, make it a little easier on yourself. Don't have to exert everything nonstop. So I think that's huge to, to get that because look, this is going to be a heavyweight fight yes. between the Kings and between the Warriors. So, yeah, no pun intended, but you need your, your heavy hitter in Draymond Green. You need your enforcer to have that strength. You need Steph Curry to, if his battery pack can be as close to fully charged as possible, that's what you need to come out on top. So, yeah, it was a smart decision by Steve Kerr, by Rick Celebrini, whoever else makes those decisions. So, I think there really was no arguing at the end of the day to rest those two guys in particular. And I'm glad you mentioned Andrew Wiggins, who arrived at 19 points. Andrew is at the podium. Andrew, if you could just sort of speak to your thoughts on facing the Kings. I mean, given the, the recent history, seven game series and played them a bunch early in the season in some memorable games. What, how do you view that matchup and what, what you will, it will take for you guys to beat them? Um, it's going to be one of those games where, you know, we have to leave it all on the floor. You know, every, every game we've had of them has been a battle to the end. You know, a physical competitive game. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be a Definitely a hard-fought game that, you know, we got to leave everything on the floor. Andrew, both um, Steve and Draymond mentioned how it feels like the NCAA tournament um, when, for the upcoming playing series. How does that impact the mentality of you preparing for these upcoming games? Oh, uh, for sure. We got to be ready because now it's, you know, win or go home. Um, no second chances. Um, but I'm, I'm confident, you know, the whole team is confident. 
Um, I feel like we're in a, a great rhythm right now, you know, offensively, defensively, and, you know, just being out there and being connected together. Um, so we're all looking forward to it. What kind of message uh, would you give to some of the younger guys on the team, JK, <clears throat> Odds, Trace, who haven't had, you know, playoff experience yet? Um, I'll just tell them, you guys are ready. You know, you guys proved what you can do all all season long. Um, you guys fought like hell all season long. Um, <clears throat> so you guys are ready, you know, and we expect them to, you know, do the same thing they've been doing. During the game today, was there ever a thought or was there ever like any scoreboard watching with the Lakers game or the Kings game happening at the same time? Or was it just kind of, we'll do our thing and see what happens? Um, it's kind of like, you know, we do our thing and see what see what happens. You know, it's the NBA, so anything can happen. But um, it played out how, you know, we thought it would. Andrew, uh, Draymond was talking about how you guys, the familiarity with the Kings. Mm -hmm. But uh, as Kendra pointed out, it, uh, Trace has sort of emerged since you guys played the Kings last. How does he sort of change the equation against a team like that with his defensive presence? Oh, man. Trace on the court, you know, he's a, he's a game changer, you know, especially with him and Draymond back there because um, he's a shot, he's a shot, shot blocking. He's, he's making people adjust their shots, you know, in the paint, making, making them think twice. Um, he's, a, he's a big key to our defense. NBC Sports Bay Area has you covered. Hopefully you enjoyed the regular season coverage. We step it up in the postseason too. Look at this powerhouse trio. <laughs> Do tune in pregame, postgame live. Of course, we've got you covered on Dubs Talk Live, also the Dubs Talk podcast. Thank you all season for watching as we get ready to step it up for Tuesday as well. All right, we need to talk a little bit more about the Kings, some of the matchup numbers, some of the players who could be X Factors. That's next with Dubs Talk Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Rolls on. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit us during our spring clearance sale. Save big on premium mattresses plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. Hey guys, we're back on YouTube. I'm trying to pull the YouTube up right now. I don't see it. So let me just keep trying to refresh. Um, I'm sure the regular folks are there. We appreciate you watching all season. Um, let us know in the comments. Hopefully I can pull it up. Are you planning on making the trip to Sacramento? If you're local, are you gonna go? I wanna hear, yeah. Yes. What do you remember about that, uh, that season? Or that series uh, um, last season. Honestly, that first game and just the environment, the crowd, what it was, and how much that meant to Sacramento for, for them not being there for that long in the playoffs, of course, right? So I'll just say that I remember sitting in that seat, actually looking at Kendra Andrews of ESPN, and we're both just like, oh, they're ready. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Like this crowd, these fans have been waiting for this moment. So it was an awesome series. And mm -hmm. now for it to be just single elimination, winner, move on, the loser, you're done. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild to think about, honestly. I actually think so. My barometer for measuring, like if a crowd is really bringing it, I bring earplugs to every single game. Do I have to put them in? Yes, yeah, I like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah. So you know, and the Kings said they they had missed the postseason for so long. They had, and then Mike Brown. It was his mm -hmm. first season, and just you feel happy for them as well. But you also want the Warriors to advance. So oh, the there you go. Yeah, just it, it's just like, it was there. It's yeah, a really good it. scene at Golden One. First of all, the arena is one of the most beautiful Great in the league. Arena. Um, this is a fan base hungry for good basketball who hadn't had it since the early '90s, um, and they arrived at the postseason, and here they are again. So yeah, we got a Game Seven rematch. We're, we're talking about putting like a Game Seven series into 48 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. The earplugs are sense. coming out. Yeah. And, I, and I love that it's going from this little brother, big brother thing to a legitimate Northern California rivalry. Yes, it's yes. Not Welcome back to Dub Stock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Taking a look at some of the numbers for Tuesday's elimination game, the 10-seed Warriors, the 9-seed Kings. Oh, shoot, 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> Look at how even these teams are. The Warriors do have a clear edge in three-point shooting. I like it. Okay, I, I like that. But sometimes we've seen this season, the Warriors have one of those off games from three. So maybe they rely on the three a little bit. Maybe they try to get some attack from elsewhere. Fortunately, this season, they can get attacks from elsewhere at the rim. 
Yes, but I do believe that the three-point line will be huge, as you brought up. You just look at Steph Curry getting this rest, being as healthy as possible. Against the Kings this year, mm -hmm. he averaged over 30 points, shot over 45% from three-point range, over 52% overall. So if he can get hot early and kind of get the Kings in that hole from three-point range, and then, of course, yeah, you think about a Clay, a Wiggins, maybe a, a Brandon Pajemski can, can get him going too a little bit. So it'll be really interesting to, to see not just the Steph Currys of the world against this team, but the surrounding guys around him. And yes, getting to the rim like a Trace Jackson Davis brings yeah. a completely different element than what we saw last year in this matchup when it comes to the big men. Although it was extremely fun to watch Steph drop a 50 burger in that game when you have to take 38 shots to do it. You don't want Steph to have to hoist the team on his back when there's such a strong supporting cast of people. So you're exactly right. Maybe it's a more balanced, more balanced uh, attack there. Um, let's talk about the Kings just a little bit here. What's going to help the Warriors is they don't defend that three very well. Middle of the pack there, okay? So if the Warriors get hot from three, that could be the game changer when some of the other margins are pretty slim uh, when these teams do match up pretty well. It'll be huge, and it's also the fact that the Kings are without two of their best three-point shooters when you think about Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. Mm -hmm. Malik Monk last year in the playoffs against the Warriors, I believe, averaged 19 points per game. He had some big-time performances. Kevin Herter, in the Kings' two wins against the Warriors this season, had a near double-double, averaged nine point five rebounds against them in those two wins in the regular season this year as well so yes defending the three-point line for, uh, for the kings against the warriors gonna be huge too but the kings being down yeah. two of their best three-point shooters i think is kind of a quiet big time x factor as well oh I, I think malik monk is in the running for six man of the year and he won't be out he's with the acl sprain mcl sprain excuse me kevin herter with a shoulder so the kings not coming into this series healthy. The Warriors, on the other hand, feeling pretty good, finding a little bit of rest for their main guys and finding fewer minutes in this game to wrap up the season with a win. Okay, Jonathan Kaminga in this game, in the starting lineup, 0 for 4, but 7 assists. Did you find his game a little curious tonight? A little curious, yes. He was someone who was questionable on the injury report. We have know that... In the past few weeks, he's dealt with a handful of bumps and bruises, right? He had the hard fall where Steve Kerr said he had the really sore pelvic, the back. He tested out this morning, said his back was good, but he didn't look like JK that can really take flight, obviously. And he's so explosive and athletic. At the same time, I do have to commend the seven assists yeah, because we know that that's not usually John Kaminga's game. He's more of a scorer. He's more of an, an attacker, as we're seeing in these highlights right here. So for him to be able to understand that, hey, he might not be having it right now. He might not be able to take off a flight like right there, but I can put my head up and find my teammates. I think that is very much a bright spot for a young player like Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga last season in that seven game series, Don, had one, one DMP. Okay, yes. and he did not play more than 13 minutes in that series. Okay, no game where he played more than 13 minutes. The Jonathan Kaminga that the Kings are going to run into is an entirely different player. So they have to game plan for him now. Um, by the way, Jonathan Kaminga now averaging 26 minutes per game. He will never have a DMP in the rest of his career, no. I would guess. You feel like, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, there you go. No. Um, and then I think part of this week, or at least leading up to the, the games this week, I'm going to... I won't say games, plural, this week. The Warriors have to win the first one. <clears throat> um, but... TJD's role. Okay, he's in the starting lineup right now. He's found a good thing alongside Draymond. But I think what the vets and coaches need to convey to the rookies this week is that playoff games have a different intensity. So maybe it compares to the NCAA a little bit, the NCAA tournament a little bit. But I hope with everything we've seen from Trace Jackson Davis this season, his maturity, his on-court know-how, that he's ready for what's coming because I think you're going to see a Kings team that tries to test him a little bit. It's not only a different intensity in the playoffs, it's a much different physicality, right? We know that there's going that the refs will hold their whistles a little bit differently than the regular season. The good news is that pretty much since post-All-Star break, it's been officiated as it's the playoffs. We've seen a much more physical style of NBA basketball since the All-Star break. It's been less of the ticky-tacky fouls and more of let them play. So I think that could set Trace Jackson Davis up for these playoffs to understand this, that it's going to be physical. Sabonis is going to go after him. Yeah, yeah. But it's such a different 
matchup, Kevon Looney versus DeMontis Sabonis compared to Trace Jackson Davis Precisely. versus DeMontis Sabonis as far as floor spacing, as far as blocking shots, as far as a vertical threat. So, so much different when it comes to Kevon versus TJD. So that'll be such an interesting matchup to watch and one that, again, a rookie, but a mature rookie mm -hmm. who has the four years of college, who has played in the Big Ten tournament, has played in March Madness before. So a completely different world when it's the yeah. NBA playoffs, but you have to be able to hang your hat that that experience should go a long way for Trace Jackson Davis. Yeah, Trace just needs to play tough and smart, but that's something that he's done all season. All right, and speaking of rookies, Brandon Pajemski sat down at the podium. Pods, obviously you're a rookie. You guys are headed into the play-in series, headed to Sacramento. Yeah. Do you think that being a rookie at all, do you think that you're settled in, being that you've played them so many times this season, to what it is that you got to do to come out victorious and then get the, go on to the second game, which is also on the road? Yeah, I think me and uh, Trace, our roles are pretty defined at this point. We know what's being asked of us, what we're supposed to do when we're out there. Um, no matter you know the lineup, who's where, who's with us. Um, so I think for me and him, it kind of gives us a comforting um, knowing what our role is, knowing what kind of minutes we're going to get, all those type of things. Um, and it's magnified more because it's a winner go home game. But um, at the end of the day, it's basketball just like every other game. Brenda, did you watch the Warriors Kings first round last did. season? What what do you, what were your thoughts, takeaways? Just what do you remember from watching that back? I feel like forth? that's for me kind of what. Um, solidified Steph as one of the best players ever. Just watching his performance, specifically in Game 7. Um, crazy stuff. Uh, but I know it gets loud in that building. I know the, the fans are going to be crazy on Tuesday night. And I think we're ready for it. As another guard, what what do you think about how De'Aaron plays? I mean, he's mm -hmm. really a guy who finishes a lot at the rim and, and stuff. What makes it difficult to go up against a player mm -hmm. like that? And just, I guess, the Kings... Overall, is I think it's just you got to show so many bodies at him in transition. Um, you know, when he's making threes, it's kind of hard to guard. I think in our first game we played in October, there, um, him and Steph kind of went back and forth shooting threes. And just watching that, it's kind of like, how do you stop a guy like that? Because he's so explosive to the rim and can shoot. Um, obviously, he hasn't shot that way throughout the course of the year. Um, but just knowing you got to always put two bodies in front of him to stop him. Um, if we want to win, that's something we got to do for 48 minutes. Regular season finale, you know, you've been through your first year in mm -hmm. the league. How would you evaluate your your first season? I think it was was great. Um, obviously, I didn't play in all 82 games, so still waiting to do that so I can get the title of rookie off my back. Um, but I think I have so much more to offer, you know, in the coming years not only in these playoffs, but in the years to come. So to see that potential and the growth um, for myself, I think is something to look forward to. And not only me, but to like Dub Nation in general. Man, what a nice answer from Pods. I and mean, when you consider the season that both of these rookies have had, it was impactful. They did great. Oh, they completely did great. They completely exceeded expectations. You think about the number 19 pick, mm -hmm. the number 57 overall pick. Mm -hmm. This has, has to be the best Warriors rookie duo yeah. in a long, long, long time. I can't even think about two guys that made this big of an impact as rookies like a Brandon Pajemski, like a Trace Jackson Davis in one single season. So I think BP will definitely have a role mm -hmm. in this game. He only played against the Kings once in the regular season, but you look at the nine rebounds that he had tonight, and that's the aggressive style of play that should definitely translate over to playoff style basketball. All right, when we come back on Dubstock Lab, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World, we're going to talk about this game just momentarily, just the last game of the season. How about that? And the BMW Ultimate Performer is Clay Thompson, who helped the Warriors get cooking early in this one to make sure they end the season with a W. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back on YouTube, and in all capital letters, the Powers family saying, can't underestimate the Kings, and got to cut the turnovers. Both of those things, yeah. Yes, and yes. 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 Yes, I don't think there will be any <laughs> underestimating no, Kings no, when they no, took no, you to no, seven no. last season. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. 
All right, I'm trying to see. I asked the question, is anybody uh, heading up there to Sacramento? We've got some waves. Yes, people are saying they will be there. Kat's saying I'll be screaming from home. I got it. I got it. <laughs> she won't um, be alone there. <laughs> somebody was asking if they saw a uh, Festus dance. Yeah, oh, my was, God. Really Festus nice. put a show on. Come on. Festus yes, is here for the people. He had the moves going. Wearing the crown after. Yes. Festus is an entertainer. Come There's on. There's nothing he can't do. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a prediction. Yin says they will win Tuesday in Sacramento. The winner of that Tuesday's game goes on to play Friday. The winner of that game will go on to play the one seed in Oklahoma City. Yeah, so, it's, okay. it is it's a, a tough path. Daunting path for it sure. It's a tough path. Sacramento, LA, or New Orleans, Oklahoma City. You're getting your miles in. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's saying, Hi, Kareth's mom. I, I don't, is my mom in here? I don't know if my mom's in here today. I don't know. She does always, she does her best to watch. <laughs> she does her best to watch. And I really appreciate that. And you do get those like texts from your family. Oh, after it's the best. Show. Yeah. It's oh good. yeah. Of course. The comments are like our texts from you guys. So thank you right. very much for saying <laughs> hi. Um, Fezzi is a dancer. Ah, yeah. All right. Nice, nice, nice. 49ers meter yet. I'm going to be watching from college. Where is college? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Where is college? Where are you guys watching? Dino cheering from Manila. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh oh, we got somebody saying light the beam in here. That's what I'm talking about. These next couple of days, these next 48 hours are going to yes, be a lot of fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. Hey, everybody. We're back on Dubstock Live. Clay Thompson, our BMW Ultimate Performer tonight. He had 19 points in the first half. He wanted to get going in this game, which was interesting. I actually wondered if Clay Thompson would rest this game. Um, when we were asking him if, if he was going to rest, um, he said, you know, it might. What was his question? It might be nice. For yeah, some he of the said guys it wouldn't who, be the worst thing. Wouldn't so. be the worst thing. I thought he was revealing they had already known that right, he was going right. to rest this game, but that's not the case. Maybe something changed. Maybe he was like, no, I don't want to rest. No, I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he got his rhythm going. It was nice because early on, you know, he was one for four from three point range in that first quarter. Mm -hmm. But I love to see the free throws going on early for Clay Thompson. And he wasn't forcing it after that. Had a really strong second quarter. And then he made two, two three pointers early on in that third quarter. Get him out there. Get him his 25 points. Scored 25 points or more. And it's in three of his final four regular season games. That's what you want to see from Clay. A Clay feeling good about his shot heading into the postseason. Clay Thompson has only missed five games this season. Definitely an accomplishment considering the injuries that he has had. Okay, so one, it all comes down to list, to this. I love the name of this uh, this full screen because here it is, guys. As the 10 seed, the Warriors have to win two games. The path is not easy here. Sacramento on Tuesday, should they win, they're going to play the winner of the Lakers in New Orleans, who just played them tough. So, man, Dalton, it is absolutely wild that the Warriors can have a better record than last season, but be the 10 seed. It's a better team. Better record, better team, but they also know that, yeah, sure, they probably could have been higher, yeah. you know, been there, done that, <laughs> what ifs. Yeah. All the what ifs are over and done with. It's coming down to one game. Yeah. Survive in advance, can't look ahead at all. So I, I love the fact that the playing tournament is for this reason. Okay, okay. The West is tough this season. We're going to see what the Warriors are made of. Can they go back to that championship DNA, back to their experience? We will learn that answer on Tuesday. Thanks for watching Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep Road. Tuesday. Ah, I have family in Sacramento, so the texts the text are going to be flying this week. <laughs> there you go. Okay, do or die time. Again, that is in capital letters as well. You're welcome, Dino. Thank you for your comment. Okay, feelings? I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction. I'm just saying, like, what could help the Warriors win on Tuesday? Steph Curry, yeah. Clay Thompson, <laughs> Draymond Green, Kay. four rings. Kay. I think, again, you, you have to hang your hat on experience, but you can't put that as the only factor, right? The, the Kings, they are a hungry team. They're a very talented team. I think one thing to also look for is Gary Payton the second's health. Okay. You know, the, Steve's still not sure if he's gonna be ready. It sounded like pregame, at least. You know, they do have tomorrow to figure it out. They do have before the game Tuesday to figure it out. But him on De'Aaron Fox mm -hmm. in the playoffs last year was a big, big deal. To have, be able to have that point of attack defender on a De'Aaron Fox who was just so lightning quick, mm -hmm. right? So. I'm going to wonder who is going to be that guy. Will it be an Andrew Wiggins or will it be a Jonathan Kaminga and you try to use your length and strength 
on a quick day in Fox. So that's a matchup in kind of a question mark that I'm, I really want to see how Steve Kerr is going to figure that out. All right. We have a lot to talk about still. So we're going to do it on Dubs Talk, the podcast. We're recording that now. So we got to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, everybody.